from Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. GEICO, committed to providing service to its auto insurance customers for over 70 years. More information on auto insurance at GEICO.com or 1-800-947-AUTO, any time of the day or night. If, for such a small word, it packs a wallop. If I live to 100, if Social Security isn't enough, if my heart gets broken, if she says yes. We believe if should never hold you back. If should be managed with a plan that builds on what you already have. Together, we can create a personal safety net, a launching pad for all those brilliant ifs in the middle of life. You can call on our expertise and get guarantees for the if in life. After all, we're MetLife. Investing takes perspective. It comes from navigating up and down markets for 60 years, spotting opportunities at home and abroad. Global Investing from Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. Issue 1, North Star Rising. My job is to make sure that uh, we have a North Star out there. What is helping the American people live out their lives? You know, what is giving them more opportunity? What is growing the economy? What is making North Star or not, House Democrats on Thursday rejected Obama's tax compromise. They demanded that elements of the tax break bill be rewritten. President Obama announced earlier this week that he had consented to a deal with Republican leaders to extend the Bush tax breaks of 2001 and 2003, both set to expire December 31, three weeks from now. The details of this week's deal. Item, extending Bush tax breaks for two years beyond December 31st, 2010. All Americans would get the breaks, the poor, the middle class, and the wealthy. Repeat, the wealthy are included in this bill. Wealthy are defined as having an annual income of $200,000 or more for individuals and $250,000 or more for a family. So in the deal, there is no soaking the rich, no class warfare, no means testing. Unless renewed, these tax breaks would expire in 2012, just in time for the next presidential election, November 2012. Features. One, unemployment benefits break. Another 13 months. This measure is not a Bush cut. It is entirely Obama's cut. Two, a state tax break. Bush cut it from 55 to 45 percent. Now Republicans want to cut it from Bush's 45 percent to 35 percent, and Obama concurs. Three, payroll tax cut, 2 percent, meaning a worker who earns $50,000 a year will get the equivalent of a $1,000 raise next year. This is a new Obama-only cut. Question, why did the House Democrats rebel against Obama? Pat Buchanan. Because the House Democrats have been defeated and repudiated and they're angry and their ideology has been trampled on. But Barack Obama is looking at the world as it is correctly. The Republicans had won that battle in the Senate. They'd said, look, you're not raising taxes on anybody. They won two votes. And Obama says, we're dealing with reality. And then he went into negotiations, John. And from the standpoint of the Democratic Party, he came out with half the pot and he went in with not even a small pair. They shouldn't be castigating the guy. They shouldn't be cussing him out. They should be congratulating him because of what he got. But there's no doubt about it. The, the McConnell-Obama deal is going to become law, John. You know yeah. what the Democrats want? Well, the Democrats wanted him to hold to his commitment not to extend the tax cuts for people in the highest income bracket. And uh, he's giving the Republicans that bone, and it's a pretty meaty bone, because they would sooner walk over broken glass than surrender on that. And so he traded and got a pretty good deal here. He's adapting to reality. Peter Hart, the Democratic pollster, says Bill Clinton is a survivor. If he were on the Titanic, he'd be on the first lifeboat. And he did a lot of things to uh, react when he lost the House and the Senate, when he was president. And this president is an adapter. He is adapting uh, to, to reality, and I think he's done a pretty uh, good let's job. Let's develop the first part of your response a little bit more. Okay, a win-win. 
Supporters of the deal argue that the bill is a win-win for the American people. One, no soak the rich. Tax cuts for all means no class warfare. Two, jobs, jobs, jobs. Tax cuts for the wealthy means more income to invest in businesses, especially small ones, that produce jobs. The linchpin of yes argument is that the wealthy are the ones that drive the economy. Nearly half of the country's income, by the way, is earned by the top wealthiest 10%, namely those who earn $367,000 a year and up. This top 10% pay the lion's share of federal taxes, 73% of the nation's taxes. Question. Obama promised in 2008 to end the Bush tax cuts for the wealthy. Why did he reverse it? Well, remember that ending the uh, Bush tax rates for the wealthy has been an article of faith for the left since Bush, Bush got them in in 2001 and 2003. This is sacrosanct to them because this is all about wealth redistribution. It is about soaking the rich. But the reason that it backfired on them this time was because America is an aspirational society. Most of us aspire to be the rich. What about That's him? number one. Number two, he's bowing to both political and economic reality. We discussed the political reality here, which he would have gotten a worse deal had he waited in until January, and then everybody's tax rates would have gone up and the Democrats would have gotten blamed. But on the economic side, the economic reality is that by conceding this point to the Republicans, he is acknowledging that tax rates matter to growth and that lower tax rates generate greater growth. And that's what it's all about. Look, this guy wants right. to get reelected in 2012. He's got to have a stronger economy. Yeah. How do you do that? You do it on the growth side. Well, I John. want to get back to whether or not the rich are the ones who do the investment and the investment in properties, etc., create jobs, as was stated just there. But before I do that with you, Clarence, I want to get this in. Big drama, Obama. President Obama sees both Republicans and, to a lesser extent, Democrats as villains in this melodrama. He accuses Republicans of holding hostage middle-class tax cuts. I think it's tempting not to negotiate with hostage takers uh, unless the hostage gets harmed. In this case, the hostage was the American people, and I was not willing to see them get harmed. Republicans are incensed by this accusation. Country, it's okay for, for you to challenge a politician about how taxpayer money is spent, but this is the President of the United States. It's a job like no other job in the world. And it really was disappointing for me to hear the president to come out after the deal was struck on taxes and say, you know, these Republicans are hostage takers. Mr. Obama also criticized his own party's purest left wing, and he debunked its unwillingness to bend. He said that their all or nothing attitude would accomplish zilch, no compromise, no concessions, and no progress. Now, if that's the standard by which we are measuring uh, success or core principles, then let's face it, we will never get anything done. People will have the satisfaction of having a purist position and no victories for the American people. Voting Democrats are saying that the president has turned his back on the liberal values he once built his campaign on. Extend tax breaks for the middle class, protect the unemployed, do not drive up the national debt by giving tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires who don't need it, and in many cases don't even want it. Sanders votes Democratic and is self-identified as an independent and as a socialist. You see how clever Obama is? I do. He's divorced itself from the, the extreme wing right. of his political <laughs> opposition. Democrats right. and Republicans. He spent more time condemning, it seems to me, the excesses of his purest Democrats than he did of the Republicans. That's what the media picked up anyway. He had the sharper sound bites. Well, there. I look at, no, not the sharper sound bites, but I looked at the full text of how much time he spent on that. Yeah, well, let's talk about the, uh, 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 he, how he gave the Republicans a break. He so this he is classic them. triangulation, is it not? Well, it's, it's Obama-style triangulation because he is, he, he's given the Republicans a break by, by letting them uh, hoop and holler about what a victory they have and distract everybody from the fact that they completely threw the deficit reduction issue under the 
the bus. This whole package uh, uh, is, is essentially a second stimulus for Obama and the economy. Uh, he he uh, is, is giving Americans back a chunk of their payroll taxes, uh, giving uh, uh, putting, putting money back into the economy right now in a way he never could have gotten this through if he'd gone to Capitol Hill <coughs> and asked for a $900 billion stimulus package. Right. But he has gotten it through, uh, letting the Republicans crow about, hey, we saved tax cuts yeah, for the it's tough, me... it's tough love he's dealing with, with the Democrats. And it's probably going to be a lot of posturing, but I think they will uh, come around. But he is not yielding on his point that the tax cuts for those upper income people should not be there. And we're going to watch the political fight evolve over the next two years. And this if the economy okay. does improve, the Republicans yeah. are going to have a very hard time defending that tax cut if they're so worried about the deficit. Well, right. Right. It's right. only an extension of the are. cuts. It's not a permanent okay. tax cut. Huh? It's only it's an extension of the not tax right. cuts. It's not permanent. So Obama hasn't given up that much. He's merely agreeing that maybe this isn't the best time to to well, uh, have but, a tax but that increase during also, a recession. But that also has a built-in problem because it's only a two-year extension. And what this right. economy mm -hmm. needs now more than ever is certainty so that investors, small business owners well, you're and individuals with this package. plan, you're, you're only getting the next two years with this package. But it's not nearly enough. Uh, hey, tax rates hey, should have been that's made better permanent. Than what we had, uh, it? Pat, in the latest Gallup poll, Obama's approval rating stands at 46 percent. His disapproval rating stands at 46 percent. Will this showdown with the White House Democrats, with the White House, will, it, will the Democrats, will this whole thing boost his approval rating? I think it's going to boost his chances for re-election, to be honest. I think he's moved into the middle. He has shown himself as a realist and he was involved in a necessary compromise. There's no change he could have made. 46-46, when you got unemployment for 15 straight months, is it, at close to 10 percent, is awfully good. And there is the possibility, I think, that this stimulus could start the economy up. There is one grave problem here, John, and Clarence has alluded to it. Not a dime of this is paid for. It's one trillion dollars right. added to the deficit. Mm, the bond yeah. market is frightened to death. And quite frankly, you take a look at what's happening in Europe, California, Illinois. We are closer to a default than ever and, and in I, our history. You think, think those statistics on the value of rich, the wealthy, investing, that that uh, is what Obama sees, and he wants that, and he needs yes. that yes. because no. of the volume. Yes. No, he would. Yes. He would love this? to get rid of those taxes, Look. but he did, wasn't <laughs> able to do it. it no, he, what he needs fun. is the wealthy because they invest. No. He's got to get jobs. He's got well, to get jobs. He's got to get jobs. The wealthy have their money. The wealthy have had their money all these years. Where is all this great benefit we've got? They're going to get more If they see any kind of a tax coming on the horizon, they really freeze it all. I don't know. If they see how a relax. Of ties, the it money, gets in the, the air. Money, they feel like they the, feel like the investment. money to get this economy going is going into the pockets of the working people, and this is a stimulus package by right. another name. And if it juices the economy, that's all to the good for everybody, including mm -hmm. Obama's re-election chances. Uh, Obama yeah. hasn't changed. He hasn't suddenly become a free market Milton Friedman devotee. His circumstances has cha have changed, and He's what not is a clear? After all. How what about is that? The, well, temporarily, because not temporarily, notice, never was. If you notice, and, and what, he, excuse me. Me. Let, let, me just, let, let me just finish. And uh, Republicans what, are, are enjoying that me, now. Clarence, anyway, what sorry. he had to say this week was that he, it pained him to have to do this. He'd rather eat his own knee, but the political and economic reality is such that he has to do it. But built into that statement was a recognition that his own economic policies have failed and he no, has no. to try something no, new. No, and no. when you say the rich, John, what it really is, not is true. small businesses. <laughs> he needs to juice small businesses that create and generate 70% of all new jobs yeah, in this and country. And no small business owner's chances are make $200,000, $250,000 a year. That's why they have small a businesses. A lot of them fall into and that And they're category. going to get yes. into more small businesses. They're going to expand their company. They're going and to create jobs. People. That's his thinking, and he knows that's true. And you know what? That, that, that is, is an acknowledgment that using, his past economic policies. Using the rich to advance his own. That's an acknowledgement that his past get, economic get, John, policies John, have He's going to bring up, he's going to bring down the job, the job, here's what happened. Unemployment. And he'll do that by the rich investors. There's a real possibility this could work in a sense, getting the economy moving. Let's say unemployment's going from 8 to 7 percent. When you come into 2012, what the Republicans will say, 
the tax cuts, Bush tax cuts work. You're going to yeah. raise them or you're nuts? <laughs> right. But, but well, if, well, well, if the common well, farmers, we're all going to be delighted about a lot of things. And, no, but, and you know, it's the man in power who's going to get the... He'll not, get the credit. But well, he will get the credit. Yeah. He will not be able to raise taxes They will look at that job what a heart number. Break. If it's 9.6, <laughs> but it drops to 9.4, 9.2, it's heaven for him. Exit question. On a political probability scale, 0 to 10, 0 meaning no likelihood whatsoever, and 10 meaning metaphysical certitude, what's the likelihood that Obama will be able to keep his deal with the Republicans substantially intact? It is between an 8 and a 9 and closer to a 9, and the sanctimonious ones in the House are going to get the back of Barack Obama's hand. Uh, I, I agree. I agree it's between 8, 8, and 9, but you've always got to have people at the barricades, Pat. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you usually are. Oh, you give it a rate on a 9. What do I, you do? I say it's a 10 because the Republicans have no incentive to give any concessions on this. The Democrats have no leverage on this whatsoever. They can try to drive a stake in the ground, but that's as far as it, it's going to go. This is the deal that you're going to get. I think it's a 10 once the uh, Democrats get through uh, um, uh, making noise, which is understandable. They want to push back. Uh, but also, their constituents are going to get a lot of benefits out of this, from the, the payroll tax reduction to, to help with, with student loans. You can go on and on. This is a goody package here. The Democrats uh, uh, resist at their own peril. Uh, I think it, last week it was a 7 and rising. I'd say it's an, an 8 or a, it's an 8.5 and rising. Issue 2, hacktivists unite. We see cyberspace at this point as, a, as basically a fifth domain of warfare. Land, sea, air, and space were the first four domains. Cyberspace is a domain that the military needs to be able to operate in, needs freedom of maneuver, and it needs to be able to defend our networks. A cyber war has broken out. Last Wednesday, a group of computer hackers, so-called hacktivists, that supported WikiLeaks mounted attacks on commercial websites belonging to credit card companies and banks that had withdrawn services from WikiLeaks. The attacks came just a day after Julian Assange, WikiLeaks founder, was remanded in custody by a London court until this coming Tuesday, December 14. Assange is charged with sexual offenses in Sweden against two women. The hit list so far includes the websites of MasterCard, Visa, PayPal. The companies refused to process payments to WikiLeaks. That refusal infuriated WikiLeaks and its loyalists. WikiLeaks itself, the registered nonprofit organization, says it did not launch the cyber attacks. WikiLeaks also says it will continue to release secret documents. Question, why were these particular targets chosen, Eleanor? Well, because they have been withholding payment for uh, WikiLeaks. But what we've got going on here is this asymmetric warfare. It's, you can get uh, security to protect your site against these kinds of attacks, but it's very cheap to mount these kinds of attacks. And they went after Sarah Palin's uh, uh, website because she's out there saying Julian Assange is a terrorist and he should be executed. And that's created an uproar in Australia, his home country, where th the first cables are coming out there. Mm -hmm. And they've revealed that the former prime minister, who's now the foreign minister, had lunch with Hillary Clinton and suggested that uh, using force with China uh, may, be, may be necessary. And uh, so there's, there's an uproar about that. And then the current prime minister is saying, uh, is, is, is very critical of Assange. And that's created a backlash among his countrymen. And I think that we're seeing some of that backlash in this country, too. Is he, you know, standing up for, you know, journalism and freedom? Mm -hmm. Or should he be prosecuted like a common criminal. People don't know quite what to do with him or what to make of him. Monica. You know, during World War II, there was a line that we used, loose lips sink ships. And I think all of this focus on Julian Assange, even though he is a great villain here, and I think what he did do was an act of war, an act, act of sab sabotage against the United States, that our, our, our focus on him is misplaced, that what we should be focused on is why the United States government cannot keep its secrets secret. And after 9-11, there was this movement to take down those silos of information and allow law enforcement to talk mm -hmm. to, to security forces and, and the CIA and the NSA and so on. And that was great in theory, and that needed to be done to a certain extent. But what happened was we went overboard and we allowed an army private first class who was serving in Iraq, who had a grudge against the military, whether it was about don't ask, don't tell, or some other thing, to have access to these top secret cables and documents 
and he downloaded it on a Lady Gaga CD and was able to pass it off to Wikilinks. So the problem here for us is we need to look inward, not outward at Julian Assange. There will always be some Julian Assange, anti-American guy waiting for these mm -hmm. secrets to fall into his lap. The problem for us is to be focused on the real uh, threat. That's good point. Contrary dispensing to information. She, contrary to what Monica is saying, I want to look, look into Assange's psyche, okay? Will okay. you help me? <laughs> what is Assange's motivation? Uh, it's very much like those other uh, uh, anonymous uh, activists out there that you refer to. The only thing that's different about Assange, John, is that he's put a face on this. Believe me, there are hundreds of thousands of other uh, either activists or would-be activists or supporters, if you will, including my own college-age son and a bunch of his mm -hmm. friends who, t who say, I like that Assange, he's badass. Why? Because he mm -hmm. has gone out there and launched his own what revolution on the web. You know, I mean, to a lot of them, they're mm -hmm. pranksters. They're the same kids who were who who were who were bombing votes for Bristol Bristol Palin on dancing with the stars but uh, uh, Monica's made the important point here. Uh, we did the right thing after 9/11 in mm -hmm. taking down some of the walls, but we took them down too far. Uh, there are reports that as many as two million mm -hmm. people, uh, that's probably the whole armed forces, have access to classified documents. Now, yeah. we've got to ask why. Well, yeah. and, right. and we've got to start, uh, start being more scrupulous yeah. about how we hang on to the secrets and not start arguing about how can we censor uh, the Your son's characterization, I regard that as, I think he regards that as very complimentary. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> yes, John, uh, I, I should tell you. you in about 30 10 seconds? <laughs> sure. What you've got is an anarchic attack on American diplomacy. Anarchy. And American Anarchic attack by young people, very talented, want to destroy America's position, destroy American diplomacy, and frankly disarm America's Are these sympathizers they, they, they are they them. going to increase in number? Sure His they, devotees. Yeah, they're going sure. to increase in number yeah, because loyalty to the United States is diminishing. Well, this size. is very it's, worrisome, is it it's not? It's not it just indeed. America, though. Yeah. As a matter of national That's security, right. is it not? It's, I think it's going to just, basically, I think American empire, if you will, is coming you mean down. All those military secrets, they et want, cetera, will be now. Subject. They would. They're probably put them all over the world to foreign engines. Uh, the empire is coming down, is, John. Assange is dumping secrets from governments around the world. This is not it's aimed at bringing okay. down okay. America. And corporations. Okay. It's Take not just choice. governments. It's corporations American. also yeah, are being hacked. Be and I think that no, it's a good thing that we know right. how vulnerable these secrets and these sa well, savings deposits are. The other are. thing your son teaches us is that secrecy is a form of evil. Issue three, Joe Biden, the right-hand man. It's a great honor being nominated vice president of the United States, and it is an honor. But it pales in comparison to the honor that I've had representing you. I am excited to be on a team, and I don't use those teams. I've never been a team. I've sort of been a one-man band. During the debate in Congress on tax breaks this week, the president sent his vice president to the Hill. Veep Biden was tasked with corralling the Democrats in Congress into accepting the president's deal on tax cuts. He led a meeting with Democrats that was described as quote-unquote rowdy and raucous. Mr. Obama's senior advisor, David Axelrod, has said that the president claims that appointing Joe Biden as his VP is arguably the best decision he has made since he took office. The two senators served in the Senate together for three years. And Mr. Obama now sees Mr. Biden as a godsend. He's pretty fearless in offering his opinions. And that's exactly what I need and exactly what I want. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama. <laughs> Christian, how effective is uh, Joe Biden as Vice President? Uh, Monica. He's a big effing deal. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, Joe Biden is sort of a classic gaffe machine. He says a lot of things that he probably wishes he could take back. But you know what? Most presidents, this one included, choose a vice president who can go out and basically be a political handyman. Give, give some uh, tough words to the opposition, even opposition in your own party. Go and do the heavy lifting in the Congress. And that's what this president has used Joe Biden for, and I think very effectively. Did the president get to know him when, they were, when he was in the Senate? Yes. And were they pals? And well, does... 
Yeah, well, well no, no, they got along, uh, and Obama thought Joe was, was clean and articulate. Uh, that, that scored a lot of points with him. Uh, but seriously, you mean when though, he was in the Senate. <laughs> but seriously, though, uh, John, uh, you may recall uh, uh, that uh, you know they got off to a kind of a bumpy start in, in the campaign uh, when they were both running for president, but uh, they never really what clashed happened? with what each happened? other. Do you remember any Well, Joe Biden uh, referred yeah. to Obama as clean and articulate and discovered that that didn't sound, uh, it sounded condescending to a lot of people. Uh, but again, that's Joe. So pe people always say, well, that's Joe again. Another one of his gaps. But right. he is you a good inside player. You think it's respectability player. time, the Atlantic Monthly, a 9,000, I believe, 500-word article that really um, raised his, the glory level for, for Joe Biden. Well, There's a new look at to Joe Biden. There was a new... You no, know, the, the old look at Joe Biden was he's a foreign policy expert, he's a great inside player, very likable guy, and uh, so well, he makes gaffes here and there. It's part of his charm. You well, think he's I effective think as a vice president? He, he, yeah, he, he was the one that brokered that deal that, right. with the Republicans, and uh, you, you don't see anybody throwing barbs at him, because uh, he went up over to Capitol to talk to the Democrats precisely because uh, they trust him, and they know they can also yell at him, too, if they don't like something, but, but he'll be honest well, with them. Well, he negotiated the deal with Mitch McConnell. So he right. worked with the Republicans to uh, produce this deal. And secondly, he's the liberal conscience on Afghanistan. You know he's in there looking for a smaller footprint, a minimalist approach. And if this president can get in big trouble, I think that's where it is if Afghanistan uh, blows up. And he's a mensch. He's a mensch. He's a, everybody loves uh, Joe Biden. And that, and that helps, especially with a president who's sort of more remote and intellectual. And, uh, and cautious. He's a, he's a, he's a, Oh, I don't know that Obama's cautious. <laughs> he's, he's very uh, he's, cautious. He's, he's, well, he's done some pretty big things, which have gotten him a lot of uh, uh, comments Trouble. that he's really a, a socialist. Trouble. So I don't know if he's cautious. <laughs> I, I like him, and I think he compliments right. the president perfectly in terms of age, in terms of experience, and, and frankly, in terms of persona. I think he's been a big help, and the fact that he's got these minor gaffes and stuff like that, you I don't think I've hurt him at all. It, it, it makes him, they're like Reagan's gaffes. You see that the mm -hmm. one who's getting the invitations to go on the road, requested by Democrats, is Biden. They're not going to vote for Obama. Biden is going to be on the ticket, and, and Hillary is not going to be on the ticket, quite frankly. And I thought there was a possibility of that. That's gone after the Assange thing. Biden's in solid for two terms. Will the United States try to have the, the extradition of uh, Assange to Extra this country? Uh, I think trial? they will eventually, yes. I think not because there's no legal justification for it. Yes or no? They will, but they won't get him. I think not. It's like the Ellsberg case all over again. I think not, too. Bye-bye. <laughs>